Is it a light rail? Is it a regional train? It's a little bit of everything. It's the River Line. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom, I'm in Camden, New Jersey, right by the Walter Rand Transportation Center. And if you watched my last video, you'll know that I'm traveling from DC to New York, but taking kind of a weird detour way to do it. So last time we did Patco, this time we're doing another transit line that I've never done before, the New Jersey Transit River Line. Now this line is really weird. It's kind of like a light rail, commuter rail, regional rail mix. It's, it's really interesting. What I like the most about it, the types of trains that they use on this line. That's right, that is a Stadler GTW train. Stadler is a Swiss company. Their trains are immensely popular in Europe. Now we've ridden the GTW when we took the EBART in the San Francisco Bay Area, but what makes it special to me is I lived in the Netherlands as a teenager. Um, that's where I'm from. And the GTW is a super popular train in the Netherlands. They run on most regional lines there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if these river line trains are going to, you know, remind me of the trains back home. The river line doesn't originate here. Instead, it starts a few stations earlier on Camden's waterfront. And the stations are pretty basic with a small shelter that includes a ticket machine. So I got my ticket. It costs a whopping $1.60 for an hour long trip. That's amazing. Which means that between the 140 for Patco and the 160 for the river line, I've paid a total of $3 to get from Philadelphia to Trenton. Here's our train right now. So if you saw the outside of the train and thought, Tom, that doesn't look like any of the other Stadler GTWs that you've shown on this channel, you're sort of right. These trains are 20 years old, so they have an older front design than most of the GTWs that I've been on, but they are very much the same train, which you can tell first and foremost because it has this power pack. This is a small car in the middle of the train. You can walk through it, but there are no seats because it contains all the diesel equipment that the train needs. That way, it's much quieter in the passenger compartments. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the seats. Okay, so these are like the weirdest seats I've ever seen. I mean, like layout-wise, they remind me a lot of European trains, like, you know, two by two, they're stiff and upright. Nothing wrong with that for a short trip, but they're made of this like fuzzy material. It's like a cat scratch pull material. I can't say I'm a fan. Our journey time up to Trenton will take exactly an hour. By the way, just as a reminder, today I'm traveling from DC to New York, but taking a detour. In the last video, I rode Patco from Philadelphia to Camden, and now we're riding the river line to Trenton, where we'll transfer to a commuter train for the final leg to New York. So what is the river line? Well, sometimes it feels like the river line itself doesn't even really know what it is. And I don't mean that in a bad way, don't get me wrong. I think a lot more places in the US should have their own version of a river line. But it is an interesting mix of different modes. So first, the basics. The river line opened exactly 20 years ago in March of 2004. It runs for 34 miles or 55 kilometers over standard gauge track from Camden, New Jersey, north to Trenton, the state capital. As we just took a look at the battery pack, we've established that the line is not electrified. It has 21 stations in total, and the name River Line points to the fact that the route runs roughly along the Delaware River. Trains run every half hour throughout the day on weekdays, with service every 15 minutes during rush hour. Transfer is available to the Patco Speed Line at Walter Rand, the New Jersey Transit Atlantic City Line at Pensacon, and both the New Jersey Transit and SEPTA commuter trains, as well as Amtrak inner city trains at Trenton. New Jersey Transit classifies the river line as a light rail. That's why fares are so cheap. 
I paid the equivalent of a bus ride traveling through one zone. However, it's not fully light rail, is it? Sure, there are some street running sections, but it also acts as an interurban, connecting a corridor of towns and cities. These Stadler GTWs are kind of a flexible train themselves anyways. They are lighter than a traditional American train for sure, but like I said, in Europe they're often used as regional trains. I think the most important factor to consider is the fact that the river line shares its tracks with freight trains. The line we're running on is owned by the state of New Jersey, but it is still used by freight operator Conrail. The two parties have an agreement. The line is used for passenger service during the day and for freight service at night. The river line trains are not compliant with the regulations of the Federal Railroad Administration, so you won't see these trains next to each other under regular circumstances. Because of this alternating agreement, river line service ends earlier in the evening than you might expect. The last train north from Camden to Trenton leaves at 9 p.m. Despite that, I think that the river line is a great example of being flexible. It combines several modes to provide rail service to an area that might otherwise not have any. This line opened in 1830 as part of the Camden and Amboy Railroad. The CNA was absorbed into the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1871, and the last passenger train ran in 1963. Freight service continued, so when New Jersey began planning a passenger rail service here, they already had a line available. This lowered the amount of construction that would need to be done. Though ridership actually is higher than initially expected, a corridor like this doesn't need the full-size trains that you would see on other lines so you can use smaller trains, which have the advantage of being able to go deeper into the city without being as disruptive. I really like the concept of being able to run fast and cover longer distances when you can, and effectively serving denser areas when you need to. The river line combines the strengths of its trains and already existing tracks to form a product that I think American cities should introduce across the country. This might be the easiest way to introduce light rail, or metro-like regional rail, to a lot of mid-sized cities that still have a lot of freight tracks around the region. So to bring a concrete example of what I mean, let's take a look at Grand Rapids, Michigan, a city that I lived in for four years. Now, Grand Rapids has for years been saying that they're going to build a streetcar downtown. And if that ever does materialize, you already know that it's going to be one of those mediocre streetcars that really mostly serves tourists. But the city also has a lot of freight tracks lying around, all of which see barely any use. I don't think any line in the city sees more than five freight trains a day. Now these lines go through different residential neighborhoods, go through university campuses, one of them even passes right by the airport, and they all end up in the more major towns around the area. So I say, build the streetcar, but then connect it to these freight tracks. You build some stations, some upgrades here and there, make agreements. It's not low effort, but it's much less effort than building an entirely new metro system. And in a few years, you could have a regional rail system that other mid-sized American cities would envy. made it to Trenton. Now I'll tell you what I thought of Riverline in just a little bit. The New Jersey Transit train to New York leaves in just a few minutes. I was 
So to transfer from the river line to the northeast corridor, you do have to go around the corner, but it's a walk of just a few minutes, and it's really not that bad. So now we're on a New Jersey Transit commuter train to New York. These run frequently all day between Trenton and New York City, and a ticket costs $16, which is a lot more than a ticket on the river line. But then again, the Amtrak ticket from DC to Philly was $10, the fares for Patco and the river line were $3, and then New Jersey Transit is $16, so that comes out to less than $30, which is still a lot less than the $100 plus that I would have spent had I taken Amtrak from DC all the way to New York. And we're in New York City. It is good to be back. Before we go exploring and stuff, let's talk about the river line because I haven't had an opportunity to do so. I really liked it. I mean, riding the Stadler trains was fun enough, but like, it's a great concept. I mean, using a freight track, but having these like lightweight passenger services on them every half hour off peak, every 15 minutes during the peak, light rail in the cities. It's like a great compromise that I think works really well here in the American context. Just imagine a landscape where like every state had a line like the river line. I would definitely ride it again. That was a really long, slow way to get from DC to New York, but we're here anyways. We're gonna enjoy being here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome and we'll see you next time.